nice interface which I enjoy and I do it use it at home and this is an example of that interface and I currently have this mic connected to the computer so if I were to hit the record button this is Barry Peters and the voice of Bainbridge Community Broadcasting BCB and today's program is called What's Up Bainbridge a five to ten minute podcast radio show about an upcoming and worthwhile local event on Bainbridge Island. So there's a digital rendition and funny enough on screen is an analog visual interpretation of the digital data because we're creatures of habit. We've become accustomed to thinking of sound waves as up and down spikes or sine waves. And this software is designed to present that to you so you can see your voice as something similar to a sound wave. And depending on the scale you choose and the vertical scale you choose, you can, you can make it large or small. So, and, and you can edit in that simply by, not unlike, you know, a word processing program or a graphics program, you could make cuts, you can bring another piece over and merge it to the front. So that's the interface for Apple's product. Uh, that's a $200 product called Logic Pro. It's sort of similar to their video editing product called Final Cut Pro. They have similar interfaces and a lot of professionals like the fact that the interface is similar across those two products. How does it differ from GarageBand? And, and it's just more feature laden than GarageBand. Um, for example, that ability to, to stretch and compress vertically is a feature in Logic Pro, but you won't find it in GarageBand. Um, so typically what we do is we record into this, into this software a very high quality voice recording done in an uncompressed way. We call it a WAV file. And that makes for a big digital file. But after editing it, we send it off to a website that for free converts it into a compressed smaller file called an MP3 that a lot of devices out there uh, can, can understand and it's about a tenth the size in terms of a file and therefore it's easier to download on an island like Bainbridge Island where the cellular connections are few and far between. So that's an interface and I'd like to kind of pause, take any questions about what I've said and, and let Jonathan come and show you a different interface. I have a question before you went wire. Are you yeah. talking all about infrastructure? How do you get this set up? How do you, how do you feed uh, so you're saying you're using Listen.com? Or Libsyn. Libsyn. L-I-B-S-Y-N is a company that allows us to go up to their control panel on the cloud mm -hmm. and upload to that control panel our audio file, which by then is in the form of a compressed MP3. So it's typically about a megabyte per minute when we send it up. But you, so you do the compression local? We, we, I actually use a website of a German group called Auphonic that for no charge lets me send my WAV file to their website. <coughs> and what they do is they have an algorithm that listens to voices, makes the voices equal in volume, mm -hmm. and lets you specify how loud the entire program should be so that you don't get the effect of like a commercial after midnight that's really loud versus a pro program before midnight that's soft. You can always specify minus 18 loudness units for our podcast. Alphonic does that at their website and sends us back an MP3, which we then send up to Lipson, store it, we met, code it with metadata, so that when it's downloaded, either at iTunes or elsewhere, people can read the text, read the title, read the subtitle, and, and so on. 
So, so and then Lipson takes care of sending the metadata and the links to iTunes for Lipson builds what's called an RSS feed, right. which makes that piece of audio available around the world in a standardized way. And, f and its servers are built to feed whenever an iPhone says, download, please. And you can just paste that link wherever, pretty much. And we can put that link wherever. And in fact, let me just quickly show you our website where you can see a Lipson link. So that's our website. And if I take the most recent podcast up here in the upper right and click on it, it takes me to the to the podcast page on our website. Is the internet slow here? And then you see that this is the Lipson standard player with our brand attached to it. And when I play that, it it can your host for this episode of What's Up Bainbridge, a short podcast radio show that previews an upcoming and worthwhile local event on Bainbridge Island. For today's What's Up interview, I'm pleased to welcome to our BCB studio Ross Hathaway, who is president of Squeaky Wheels, and Bruce Bakken, who is the treasurer. Squeaky Wheels is a bicycle... So there you go. That's, a, that's the beginning of an eight-minute podcast. And what we like to do is attach text to it and photographs. And the text is part of the metadata that Lipson allows us to embed in the file. And then that metadata travels around with that audio file so that people always have access to that information about the podcast. So there's also a, um, a piece of HTML code that we can give a web developer and say, here, put this on your page and this little thing will pop up. And I think if you go to the uh, robotics team's page, Spartronics, uh, well, I can show mm -hmm. I can show it, but um, you can see at the top of the page there's that little Libsyn player, and you can click and listen to the podcast that is associated with that website. And that's what we've done with Inside Bainbridge, with some of these um, other websites. Our, our single most popular download was uh, the story of the Bloedel Reserve Shakespeare Festival last summer when 650 people downloaded our podcast because uh, BPA put it on the BPA website, Bloedel put it on the Bloedel website. Those are both very popular websites. We had put it on Inside Bainbridge and so on and so on. And so 650 people were able to listen to that story and they sold out you know, uh, eight, all eight shows. And it was a very nice story where we helped an arts organization be successful. The, the audio player, you said something about uh, the company that produces that also produ can produce text and uh, video to go with it. No, um, I was saying your video I was saying Lipson yeah. Lipson has designed this HTML5 audio player so that it runs on all devices, and and so we embed that. HTML code, as Jonathan was saying, onto this page, onto Inside Bainbridge's page, and other pages, so that it enables any user on that page to press the play button. We separately apply text as metadata that we attach to the MP3 file, embedded in the file, and we separately uh, embed photographs into this WordPress website. Yeah. Metadata usually describes a subject and title and so, yeah. speakers, things like that. Exactly. It's part of the, the year the podcast was made, who has the copyright, and so on. What is a, what is a phonics business model? How do you send them wave files? God knows. Um, it's a program, basically. You send it to them, it goes to their server, the server runs the program on it, sends whatever but that where program their money to them. <laughs> right. <laughs> well, you can pay for to have more than, I think, two hours per hour. Oh, yeah. They will only do two hours per for free. Month. Yeah, for free. But because of how many editors we have, and each one has their own Alphonic account that's free, we basically have we never pay. probably 40 to 60 hours of every month that we get it, which we don't come close to producing. So they also have a, a desktop um, app that they sell for real big professional use. So, uh, so. What do you think, Jonathan? Do you want to show another interface? Yeah, over there? I'll show another interface and go a bit more in-depth on the interface.